Hey guys, welcome to another video. Today we're gonna to be talking about how to build a text generator from scratch and how to use that text generator to generate brand new Netflix content like some of these. Now, that might seem daunting, but I promise you this tutorial and video is very beginner friendly. Anyone from who, someone who's just starting out to maybe experienced data scientists can watch this, use this code and get started. And I think it's super exciting, especially for those people who are just starting out, being able to get your hands on something this complex that early on is really fun and makes things super exciting. And I'm not gonna lie, I feel like even every time I've built a new project or use this code, I get excited every single time. Like, I can't lie, I think text generation is my favorite part of NLP and really my favorite part of data science in general. I absolutely love it, so much fun. You could work on so many interesting and quirky projects. It really, I, I don't know, it really allows you to kind of engage in the creativity of data science, right? Which I absolutely love. And like I mentioned, we're gonna to try to push the limits of this creativity by trying to generate brand new descriptions to Netflix content. I know it sounds crazy, and as you see each and every one of these steps, you're gonna see how kind of attainable and not so difficult that is. And I absolutely love it. I think it's so exciting, and I think you guys are gonna love it too. Before I do hop into the how and kind of the nitty gritty, let me highlight a couple things. Take a look at the description. I've put together a bunch of helpful content that'll help you get off the ground, and that obviously will include the code that I encourage you to check out. Um, also, there's gonna be a lot of other helpful like content if you're trying to get into data science, if you're interviewing, etc. Definitely, it's all for you to kind of, kind of help you along your journey. And lastly, if you like these videos, if you like all the content I'm putting out, please like and subscribe. I'm just getting this off the ground, so your support is absolutely invaluable, right? Um, now that I got that out of the way, let's actually start hopping in. Before I really dive into the code and results and the model, it's a couple of things I need to highlight to kind of get us all on the same page, right? I'm sure you might be thinking this, and I thought the same thing, and that was, how can I even train these models, right? This is such a complex tax. Do I even have the machine power? Is it gonna to be too expensive for me to do? And these are all normal thoughts. And like I said, I, I felt the same way. And that's where this one term called transfer learning really comes into play. And that is taking someone's else, someone else's model and fine tuning it for your application, right? We're not Facebook, we're not Google, we're not open AI, right? We don't have millions of dollars to train a single model. So what we can do is take their huge, robust model, use their weights, use their parameters, and then tune it on my application. And my application could be anything from generating comments on Reddit, can be generating Netflix movies, can be generating tweets, right? It could be anything and that's what the beauty they build a super general model and then we take that and then apply it to something specific using our own data set right super easy to use super seamless and gives us so much flexibility for any interesting tax task that we want to work on and in our case we're working with a model called gpt2 um that's built by the open ai team and the model's unbelievable that team is unbelievable i'll put together a bunch of useful um links that kind of take you to their work and other blog posts that they put together that I think you find really interesting. Um, you might be wondering like, okay, GPT-2, text generation, like what's actually happening under the hood? I'm gonna give a brief overview here, but we'll provide um, links and resources that you can kind of learn more from. Um, what it is is a very sophisticated language model. And what language models try to do is take some context, right? It could be a window of, a sentence, two sentences, etc. right? Every language model can be different, but it takes some window and looks to predict some word that comes right away or in the future, etc. right? So it's, if you say, I have a blank, right? And then um, it could be something like, my dog ate his blank, right? And the model will try to learn, learn, and try to predict what is the best word, right? At a small level, you're like, how can it even do that? Now imagine it learns based off of 8 million articles on Reddit, right? After you've gone through and scraped through all of that and trained a model on all of that, it really starts to understand um, context, understands 
okay, if you see this type of pronoun, this type of adjective or verb or what have you would come next, right? That's kind of it uh, as like a baseline, what goes into language models. Now, what's really interesting about GPT-2 GPT is it uses this transformer matrix or framework and transformers have this underlying theme called attention, right? And attention are these weights to help the model understand what it should be focusing on, right? And that's why it's called attention, right? It, it's atten uh, paying attention to specific pieces of the text, the sentence, etc., that indicate what type of pronoun should be coming next, right? That is essentially the two main kind of key pillars that go into a model like this, right? And when you take these two constructs, right, and then train it on millions of articles, allow for millions of weights, you start to get a very comprehensive, sophisticated model, right? This is another reason why transfer learning is so important. Imagine we wanted to run this ourselves, right? That's, I think it takes about 250, 260 TPU cores to get this running, right? That amounts to about $300 per hour to get this running. They say it could take two to three days to get this running, but that's entire, uh, entirely speculative, right? So we're talking about thirty dollars to $40,000 to recreate the model that we're leveraging, right? That's that's why it's so beautiful that this is open source and the, we have the ability to take these weights and take this really robust, expensive model and apply it to our um, use case, right? I think, I think, I hope that emphasizes the monumental effort that goes into one of these models and why it's we shouldn't take for granted the ability to leverage transfer learning and leverage what um, this brilliant team has done. That was kind of it in <laughs> like a jam-packed kind of definition or kind of explanation, but take a look at this video, right? I know I don't expect that all to make sense right away, right? And I don't want that to be the focus of this video, but if you are curious to learn more, take a look at this video by Computer File. They, I love those guys. Their explanations are easy, engaging, and really teach you a lot. So I'll include the video and any links to Computer File in the description so you can check it out and um, if you want to reference it or in the future. Um, kind of with that out of the way, let's hop into what I think is the most important and critical part of this whole project, which is the data and the data prep. Right, so in our case, like I mentioned, we're working with the Netflix data set that I grabbed from Kaggle. And again, I'll put in the uh, link in the description so you could take a look at the data yourself. But this is what the data is gonna look like. It's tabular, very straightforward. You have the movie and the description. Um, and what we're trying to do is generate brand new descriptions of that or of a new movie, right? And that's kind of the goal of the problem. The, one tricky part about GPT-2 is it needs to take in one large text file, right? It can't take in a tabular pandas data frame like this. So that seems simple enough. Let's just convert this column into one large text file, right? And like I said, it seems simple enough and it would look something like this and okay, we might be done. We have the data set ready to um, be inputted into the model. Now, this brings me to a very important point um, in this project, which is the idea of constrained and unconstrained text generation, right? And I'll illustrate kind of the importance of that in this really simple example, right? And that's, if it's unconstrained, it's not gonna stop when I want it to, right? It's gonna just keep going and going and ultimately start rambling and stop, it'll stop being useful very quickly, right? Um, that might work if you're trying to write a massive passage or just ramble and ramble. But in the use cases like the one we have, or if we're trying to generate um, tweets, right? We need things to be very constrained. Um, so ideally we'd want it to work something like this, where it stops exactly where it's supposed to, right? It doesn't keep going. And again, it doesn't keep rambling. And that begs the question, how do we trick this model into doing just that? How do we trick it to only put one Reddit comment or only output one tweet or only output one Netflix description. Um, we know we're forced to only input one large text file, right? So we need to convert or transform that text in a way that ends up tricking the model into doing what we want, right? And we do that using very explicit 
and verbose tags before and after each of the descriptions, right? And I think the best way to explain that is just illustrating what you see right here, right? This You see a start of text, end of text tags before and after each of these, um, each of these descriptions. This model is temporal in nature. It's looking at word by word and understanding the sequences of these words, right? And what ends up happening is the model then knows I need to put this first tag ramble or not ramble. I should then generate a new description. And then when I'm done, I'm going to put an end of text tag. It'll understand that because I'm using this convention for every single one of the Netflix movies, right? So it just learns over time that this is what I need to do if I'm starting and ending a new description, right? And I think the best way to illustrate why you need to do this is showing what happens when you don't use it, right? And here's an example of that. This is a, an output that didn't have any of those tags before and after. And you see that, okay, it starts off like somewhat realistic. These are actual um, descriptions, right? But how would I actually use this, right? If I wanted to build an app that only sends a notification with a certain a one description or outputs just one description, I could never do that here, right? It would be so impossible to use any NLP te technique to figure out what is one description, right? It, it really is impossible to use. And on the contrary, when we do use those tags, we get this type of result, right? And just first glance, you can immediately see the results are in a much better format quality. And I'm not even talking about the text within each of these tags. I'm just talking about how easy this would be to then leverage if we want to output just one or two or three descriptions, right? It just, it makes our life a lot easier when um, we're actually leveraging this for some production code, etc., cetera, right? Um, and I think you could quickly check if you look at some of these descriptions, they're pretty funny, right? I think they're already starting to make sense and they're kind of, we're pretty close to where we need to be. Um, now, before I wrap up and kind of, kind of leave you on your way to start working on your own text generation models, I want to highlight two code blocks that I think are really important. I'm not going to go through parameter by parameter because the notebook that I give you will have definitions for each and every one. Um, so before you do jump in, I encourage you to definitely read through those so you know kind of what's happening. So the first code block here is essentially the loading and the tuning of the pre-trained model. Um, loading is very simple, right? All you do is pass a string of which model you want to use. Um, a couple of things to note there, OpenAI has provided several models for us to kind of work with, and they all depend on the size, the number of parameters that they used to train that model. Um, as you'd imagine, the larger the model, the more complex and ideally the better results. I encourage you to take a look at and use as many as you can just to kind of kind of have some fun and kind of experiment. In our case, we're just using the 355 million um, parameter model. Next is the essentially fine tuning of that model for my use case, right? And again, my use case is generating brand new Netflix descriptions. Um, I'm not going to go through each and every one of the parameters, but there's a couple I do want to highlight. You see that there's a model name parameter and you might notice that the string I'm passing is consistent with the string I passed to load the model. And that's intentional. You have to make sure they do match or else uh, you might run into issues and the code probably won't run. Also, uh, the number of steps and learning rate are pretty critical. The number of steps are such the iterations you take to fine tune the model and get the desired kind of performance. The larger the data set, maybe the more obscure the data that you're using, the higher steps you might want to use. This is really case by case. I don't have kind of ubiquitous rule for this. I, re I, re I encourage you guys to kind of try it out and see what works for you. Um, also, learning rate, if you have a small data set, you're going to decrease your learning rate to give it kind of a better opportunity to find the optimal kind of set of weights. If it's too large, you won't really get there. So again, smaller data set, the smaller the learning rate that you'd want to use. And when you do run this code, you'll expect to see something like this. It's going to be quite verbose, it's going to be a lot of outputs, and it's kind of interesting because you actually get to see 
how the model's learning over time. After step after step, you see that it gets better and better in terms of generating text. Um, don't be alarmed if you see something like this. And also don't be alarmed if it takes a little while. It does take an hour or so to completely run. So just be aware of that and don't get discouraged if you feel like it's taking too long. And the next bit of code is the actual generation piece. This is where I actually generate a brand new Netflix description. Um, one thing to note, and you'll see in the previous code block, the output tag that I used to kind of save the model is the same tag that you see here. In this case, it says run for Netflix, right? So that needs to be consistent or also won't know which model to kind of look at. Um, what to generate a new description, right? I think it's really critical. It'll break down if those aren't consistent. Another one that I like to mention is temperature. So this is kind of fun. If you increase or decrease the temperature, you get to make the descriptions more or less ridiculous, right? Which can be kind of fun, especially for something like Netflix descriptions. You can really crank that up and then see how weird some of these descriptions are. Um, that's all I kind of want to highlight here. I think, again, go through the notebook. Let me know if there's anything that isn't clear. I, I think you should be good because there's just so much um, description there. And lastly, I think let's go through a few examples. Here are just a handful of my favorites that I think are just <laughs> like, some of these almost seem like they could be Netflix shows, but also I think it's just unbelievable that within this, few lines of code, few, like a little amount of time needed to prep the data, I'm able to generate something like this, right? This is for me, AI, right? I think it's my definition of AI when I was coming into um, data science, right? I know it's kind of dumb, but for me, it, <laughs> that's definitely the case. Um, and with that, I hope you enjoyed the video, right? My real goal for this video is to build a framework and give you guys all of the materials you need to build your own text generation model within hours, right? I I strongly believe if you go through this video, look at the notebook, you'll be generating your own text within hours, right? And I think that's so exciting and I hope that excites you guys and gets you guys excited about NLP and text generation in general. Um, as always, if anything isn't clear, if anything is confusing, you can always message me on LinkedIn or just drop a comment, right? I'll, I try to be as attentive and I try to answer as many comments as possible. So um, I'll be sure to look out for that. Um, that's kind of all I had. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, definitely drop a like and subscribe and I'll see you guys in the next video.